Here are 10 things to know in After Effects for motion designers, or really anyone who uses After Effects for that matter. These 10 tips are here to give you a burst of ideas for all your upcoming projects. So if you want to conquer the world, let's get started. We're going to hit the ground running by adding master textures to your projects. Anytime you want to add a quick texture to your overall project, import a texture and create an adjustment layer. Then add the texturize effect from stylize to the adjustment layer. Then set the drop down to your texture layer and that's how to quickly add detail to your entire project. The next tip is creating shape or symbol maps, which are great for adding fast paced detail to your projects. So start with the shape or just a text layer. For example, I'm just going to use the plus symbol here. Then trim up the layer to only be a few frames long. Go to position and right click it and select separate dimensions. Then alt click the stopwatch for X position and type random open parenthesis 0 comma 1920 close parenthesis. Do the same for Y position but make sure that last number is 1080. These last numbers should be or at least close to your composition size, so 1920 by 1080. Lastly, add posterize time to the layer and set it to one. Now we can duplicate our layer and it will randomly be repositioned upon each duplicate. And when you offset your layers in your timeline, you now have a beautiful shape map. Similar to our previous technique, this is how you can create a repeated background with any symbol or object you want. Once again, start with a symbol, graphic, or logo. Then select that layer and go to Layer Precompose, and finally go into that precomp layer. Then go to Composition Settings and set it to 100 by 100. Then just click OK and return to your previous composition. Now add the Motion Tile effect from Stylize to the Symbol Composition. Then just increase the output width and height to duplicate this shape and finally you can animate the tile center to animate the background looking pretty good since we're on the topic of creating duplicates you can turn any object into millions by using a particle effect apply the cc particle world effect to a solid layer and straight away go into the particle tab and set it to textured quad polygon then drop down the texture and set it to the object that you have in my case it's a leaf from here, I like to increase the birth and depth size along with the size variation and max opacity to 100%. From here, we can move the producer to be above the composition and increase the radius X to further the spread. Lastly, you can adjust the gravity and other physics settings along with the longevity to create your perfect object generator. The next technique is being able to take shape layer objects and turn them into interesting repeated animations. And I'm really starting to think that this should just be a duplication tutorial at this point, but I have the circle here with the wiggle paths added to it. We can add a repeater to the shape layer and this will create an ugly duplicate. However, if you go into the transform repeater and set the X position to zero and lower the scale, we're starting to get somewhere. You can increase the number of copies to duplicate your object and even lower the end opacity to fade it into your scene. As a quick bonus tip, if you want to speed up your workflow, be sure to get our 100 free template pack along with our free animation presets for After Effects linked below. With our Motion Duck extension, you can animate entire scenes within a matter of a few clicks. We also have over 25,000 plus templates available for AE and Premiere Pro. So if you do pick up anything, you'll be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. Sometimes you need to create complex animations that will animate an object across your scene. Instead of doing this manually by adjusting the position of an object, instead use the pen tool. Just create a mask of the motion path that you want and then go into the mask one, click mask path and copy it. Then go to the position of your layer and paste that mass data into your position. This will animate your object along that path and you may need to select all the keyframes and make adjustments, but this is a great way to create complex animations. If you wanna make your projects pop, then add a line burst. This is how to create these. Draw a straight line with the pen tool and make sure only stroke is enabled. Then add trim paths to the shape layer. And inside of the trim paths, animate the start and end from 0% to 100%. Then offset the end keyframes by a few frames. Now, add a repeater and inside of the transform repeater, set the X position to zero and the rotation to 90 degrees. And finally, increase the number of copies to four. And if you duplicate the overall shape layer and rotate it, you can create a more in-depth line burst for your project. 
Anytime you're working with lines, sometimes it's worth taking a look at smoothing out those hard edges. Here we've created a line with the pen tool and animated with trim paths. Once you have your line ready, you can go into taper, which is inside the stroke settings and set the start and end length to 100%. And this will give your line a very smooth and curved design. Sometimes you need to loop an animation. Instead of copying and pasting keyframes, do this. Create your first set of keyframes and then all click the stopwatch. Type loop out, open, close, parenthesis, and this will repeat the animation forever. Furthermore, here I'm using the motion tile effect to expand my scene. If I animate the tile center by a touch and then add the expression loop out, continue, this will continue the animation in the same increments forever. The last tip is an important one, which is understanding the depth of field feature in After Effects cameras. Most of the time when you use a camera and enable depth of field, nothing happens. This is because of two reasons. One, you need to make sure your layers are offsetted in Z position when they're 3D layers. If your layers have the same Z position, you do not have any depth. Then the next thing you need to increase is the aperture within the camera to a high amount. Once that is set, you can adjust the focus distance to focus your scene while turning everything else blurry. If you want more motion design tips, please be sure to subscribe and always be creative.